Hello everybody, Jason Christman, Grazing Acres Farm. Don't look much like grazing right now, but that's because we're in the low 80s and they got a little hot. We got storms approaching this evening, so uh, I figured I'd come up right now and uh, check everybody over. Um, we're expecting our first calf here real soon for the year, or for this season, I guess I should say. Um, and then the ones from last year, or the cattle from last year that I have uh, recorded, um, those should start calving, um, I think, the 13th. Um, this one here of mine, Casey, is the second one to calf, according to my records. And 176 is the very first. And going by what I see, look at that udder. I think she's due on the 10th. So I'm expecting a baby out of this one about any day now. Uh, if we go back behind her and look at her vulva, she definitely got some springiness going on there. But uh, she looks real good. She's starting to slick out, as you can see. Um, very, very fuzzy right now. If you touch her, you're definitely gonna get a handful. Isn't that right, girl? But what I want to talk about today is uh, with the new calving season started, um, one thing I noticed last year is on these hot days, um, the new calves, they were always wanting to drink of water, but they couldn't always get their head up and over the edge of the 100 gallon stock tank. Um, so last year I played around with it a little bit, trying to make some kind of a little uh, short water tank that they could get to. and. Uh, I didn't really have any success with that just because I threw it together real quick. And uh, with cattle, you can't really do that. You've got to take your time and, and make something structurally strong uh, before you give it to the cattle or it's just all downhill from there. So what I did is I took some time to uh, make some additions to my existing water sled for the herd. And I want to share those with you today. Um, as we start to calve, we started to get some newborns on the ground. Then I'll share an update and show how it's working. So uh, let's check that out and uh, see what you think. You know, it's spring now and uh, just a few weeks we'll be starting our calving season for 2019. With that being said, um, I need to uh, update my water sled for the cattle. What you're looking at here is the part of the water sled that holds the 100 gallon stock tank. Um, you see those upright arms, um, the stock tank sets between those and those arms keep it from falling off when I drag it to the next paddocks. Um, there's a little piece of log chain here in the front that I hook up to my ball on my ATV and that's what I drag it with. Um, the part I need to update is the calves need something to drink out of that the cattle cannot access. So my game plan is, is to take this piece here that's already welded together, slide it over to this, and weld them together and make them all one piece. So, it would look something like that. And then my 100 gallon stock tank will still set up here, and back here we will set this for the calves to drink from so that will go there that's 17 and a half gallons angus that's not for you buddy although you do represent a good calf yeah you're about the right size buddy um so to keep the the cattle from drinking from this i need to put either weld some kind of a structure over top of it so the cattle can't get under it or weld some kind of uh, apparatus around it that I can hook poly wire to and make hot. Um, the problem with that solution is not every single one of our paddocks um, do I place the water at the edge by the poly wire. There's a couple paddocks that I place the water right in the center of the paddocks just because of the location of the spigot. So I almost see some kind of a solid structure here being better than poly wire. Um, but thinking about how cattle work, they like to rub. So if that's the route I take, it's going to have to be really heavy duty because I'm sure they're going to rub on it. Um, so the water is going to come from the spigot. And over here I got some parts. Just came in the mail a couple days ago. Um, from the end of the water hose, we're going to put this on there and it's going to wire it off. 
one half will go to the 100 gallon stock tank the other half will come to the 17 and a half gallon tank for the calves um, inside of there i will be placing this uh job rojo valve uh, i've never used job valves but i've heard a lot of good things about them um, if you're interested in trying one of these valves out I'll link it down in the video description. I picked this one up on Amazon for, I believe, $36. So here's what comes with your Rojo valve. You're going to get the valve itself with a rubber seal. The rubber seal goes on the inside of the tank. And then you're going to get this nut. Um, if you're familiar with Amazon, you scroll down about half a page and they... They often show things that people purchased when they purchased the same item. So in my case, people also purchased this little uh, adapter, which screws onto the end of your valve and makes it so a water hose will screw on. So you'll want to add this, and I think this was $8 for this fitting. So that there is a whole complete valve, but you have to buy this separate. So with the valve, you'll get an arm extension. Um, both screws come with it. You got one on that side, one on this side, and you're able to attach the float right to the arm. Or they give you a string, which you can loop through this hole right here on the end. And that's the route I'm going to take. I've actually already used my uh, drill, and I'm a big fan of these uh, multi bits. You got several different sizes here. I use this to puncture the hole into my tank, and I'm now ready to install my float. So right here is my hole. My float is just simply going to, might need to go a little bit bigger to get it in all the way. It's gonna push in like that, and then on the end I'm gonna tie my string and bring it up to the ball. So let me go ahead and get some things caught up and we'll come back and I'll show you where I am at that point. Okay, so I've got the valve installed. Um, I made sure to use thread tape before I put this brass part on, that way there's no leaks there. And I went ahead and attached my string to the arm and I've got it loosely tied to the ball. Now what I need to do now is hook up a hose and make sure my uh, string is adjusted at the right point and if it is, I'll go ahead and tie a knot. If it's not, then I'll make adjustments to where it needs to be and then tie a knot. Okay, so the tank is now filled up. Um, the valve is working and adjusted. I do think maybe I will uh, adjust it again um, once we actually get this on pasture. Um, it's probably a little bit too full because not very often does the tank set completely level or that close to level so I want to give a little bit more room um, just so it doesn't overflow so I'll probably take the ball down another inch or two at, at the very least but for the most part it's adjusted it is working and uh, now I need to get the sled welded and uh, make some kind of a platform to set this tank on so I just set up my uh, my splitter hose I've got my splitter and then I've got about two foot of hose and my ends are on. So the convenience of this splitter having valves is going to make it nice if uh, for some reason one of these tanks is having issues I'll be able to shut it off and open the one that I want to use. So that's going to be rather nice. Um, it's actually going to get to a point where the calves are going to get tall enough over the summer that they'll be able to drink out of the 100 gallon tank. But when they're first born, the first few months, they're going to need something a little shorter. So we'll resort to the smaller calf tank here. Um, but once they get old enough and outgrow this one, sure, I'll be able to come over and shut this one off. And uh, not have to worry about filling it and only filling this one. Now, at the same time, I don't know that I'll actually do that. Um, now that I think about it a little bit, because what will happen is all the big cows will return to this tank. And the little guys will get trampled if they come over there and get a drink. So it's probably best that they have their own source of water. So at either rate, I got my hose set up. And uh, that is now ready. So this is a little flyer that come with the valve. And, uh, you know, I'm skimming through it while I'm waiting for the tank to fill up. And uh, 
this particular Frost Pro doesn't work with the valve I bought, but it does work with the Topaz and the Vortex valve. So maybe by winter I need to upgrade just so I can try this Frost Pro. What this does, from what it says here, it allows continuous flow of water through the valve to assist in prevention of water freezing in the valve and pipe supplying it. So that would be rather handy during the winter time. Um, be worth trying for sure. So uh, I know the guy that I custom graze for watches these videos. Uh, might be something we should consider trying one of these uh, Topaz or Vortex valves. Okay, so here in the last little bit, I know it's getting hard to see with the sun moving over this tree that I'm sitting under here, but I've cleaned up my joints where I'm getting ready to tack the back part to the front part of the sled. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, additional pieces back here for that tub to sit on and something to hold it in place. So we'll catch you back up after I get everything assembled. Okay, so everything's tacked up, welded up. Um, I need to do a little bit more welding on this uh, top wrap here that will go around this tank and hold it in place. But uh, for right this minute, I'm gonna have to call it done for this moment. Um, we got rain coming. The skies went all gray and cloudy. I need to uh, go move the herd before the rain gets here. And it just so happens that I need to take down the previous paddocks so I have the materials to move them. So. Got to put this on hold. I'll come back to this uh, maybe tomorrow and get it finished up. This is what we've got so far, looking pretty good. Now uh, let me show you here real quick the way this will work. Just like so, sits right down in there, ready to rock and roll. I learned a long time ago, if you're gonna build something like this um, for cattle, take the time, do it right, or you can take the time and do it 12 times in one year. Cattle are rough on stuff, so build it strong, build it right, take your time. Um, you won't have to mess with it for a few years. Maybe not at all. So, good way to test your welds. Weld something, give it to cattle. If it breaks, your welding sucks. If a year or two goes by, your welds are still holding up, you know you've done pretty good. Okay folks, a couple days have passed now since uh, my last update on my sled. Um, yesterday I finished it up um, and I'm going to try and uh, install it here in a couple minutes and see how the cattle respond. Before I do that though, let me kind of show you some of the things I've did since we last left off. First thing is here is what the base looks like. Um, you can see I've got something to wrap my tub completely. That way as I'm dragging this to the next pasture or paddocks, um, I don't have to worry about that tank falling off and then going back and having to pick it up. So that'll hold it on there. Um, I gave it a nice solid base to hold uh, the weight of the water. And um, this apparatus here, let me back up a little bit so you can see it better. Um, this is what I'm hoping will keep the big cattle from trying to drink out of this tank. Now let me set the tank back in there real quick so you can get a better perspective on things. Okay, so there you can see how the, uh, this is just a plastic PVC pipe. It's very flexible, but I've gave it two adjustments and they're basically, a, the adjustments are off of this arm. I can set this arm up there, or I can move it down here, which will drop this down um, and make it a little bit lower for the shorter cats or the newborns when they're first born. And as they age, I'll be able to take it up a little bit. And then once they get to that point where it's set at now, by that point, they'll be able to go over and drink out of this trough, which is going to be that one sitting there. So let me show you what I did here. To, get, to allow for those adjustments. Basically, you just lift this up off of here and you stick it down on the next one, like so. And you can see it came down quite a bit. So, um, 
I'm gonna get it hooked up real quick and then I'll slide it over there and uh, we'll see how the cattle respond. Um, around the top of this, um, I ran some poly tape around it. Um, and then I'm gonna take the end of that and tie to this hot wire and uh, that should keep the cattle from going under here. We'll see how they respond though here in a couple minutes. Okay, so I just now turned on the water um, I got this side turned on and I've got this side shut off right this second um, But I'm gonna go ahead and turn this side on It's filling up now and Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take this extra poly wire here and I want to pull some over here and Tie it to this hot or what will be hot wire in just a couple seconds And then we want to stand back and observe let me go ahead and raise this up to the higher setting for these bigger calves we don't have any newborn yet just some older calves that are going to need weaned here before long and we'll let them have access into this side so I gotta walk over here to the hand gate turn the power back on real quick Okay, so the fence is back on. <laughs> kind of observed for a couple minutes. And uh, just see how, how this all works. You know, a lot of this you gotta just experiment with, folks. You can't be afraid to do a little bit of uh, experimenting. See if something works. When you find something, don't change it till you find a way that it does work. Hooking this uh, tank up this morning, I ran into a little issues. Um, I went to unhook or to hook the hose up to my splitter there, and the hose, aluminum fitting, screwed into this brass fitting, which screwed into the stock tank. This aluminum fitting has seized inside of this brass piece, so I had to cut it off. I had to run back to the front of the farm dig through supplies, wasn't able to find one, so I had to run back home and then come back up. But I've, uh, what I ended up doing was just cutting the end of the hose off and uh, throwing on an adapter and a clamp. We're good to go. Look. hot it works don't try it Miley it's a setup it's a setup girl um, one thing I want to mention is I also added a drain plug here at the front that's so that I don't have to move this while it's completely full I can drain it and not have to lift it up out of there and dump it each time I can just simply take that plug off